All right, I have a blessed seed submission from God Has a Wife. And I thought it would be a good candidate based on what uh, they said as being the most straightforward Awoken Stygian run ever. If we're trying to do a speed run, I mean, already 27 minutes is going to be hard to beat. So that's what we're going to hope for. We're going to try to just do a speed run on it. If we die, we die. All right, patient. Not gonna spend too many, too much time on anything. We're gonna go chill wind. Uh, we're gonna go Jap strips. We're gonna take the money. I haven't even looked at the map. Who has time to even look at the map in a speed run? I suppose we should take a quick look. Okay, Stygian. Stygian. I have to imagine this is just an in-can't run. Straightforward so far. Here we go. Quick armor gain. All right, I'm already committing to this. We're going to go. Don't have time to think, just do. I'm gonna go this reroll. Hopefully afford a multi strike. Oh that is not a multi that is not a multi strike. Maybe maybe he said go to maybe the endless is what he wanted there. Um anything to do here. I don't know. Maybe. Kinda wish I took that crypt builder. Anyway, this will be interesting. Spell shield to burn through there. Damn. Alright, taking a little bit of hits here. I need you to do the majority of this work, and I can't ember drain. Alright, we get through that one, but uh, I've got a little heavy on shards here. I guess I'll take this. Um, suppose I'll take that. Let's go for multi strike here, I guess. Okay, we got that. That definitely amps things up here. Where's the next hell vent? So there's a hell vent. worried about leaks, so let's just get a spike of gold or a free incant, whatever it ends up giving us. I think this deck really wants to get a conduit to this at any rate. Jackstrip's doing pretty well for us. I'm 
just save these. Get the full value there. Take that. Adaptive should be okay with the Rage Gain. And we don't need anything else. Uh, conduit would be nice in a way to make Conduit survive would be nice. Minus two we could put on something. And we're just going to have it the unit for now. Um, let's see if we're getting a Conduit. Not getting a Conduit. So that it's a little bit of a downer. Um, I, w I don't think I would blow an intrinsic here and trying to keep Tethys alive if that's not going to happen. We could just go triple siren, I guess. Minus two there. Was going to put it on some other stuff, but I think we're going to go triple siren, no Tethys Toth, and that means we should hit magics when we can. All right, we're gonna have Party Boy, but I still don't think we're gonna go bottom here. by doing that anyway. I'm just doing this for the incants. Um, and this so I can survive this guy if I can't kill him. If I don't redraw Ice Tornado here, or if it doesn't hit. Alright, so we take damage from Scourges, but at this point we're pretty statted up, so I think we're probably fine. He is double striking with some pretty crazy stats, but yeah, we're fine. Barely. <laughs> Chill when putting in work there, though. Without a conduit, I don't know that I like any of these. Um, preserve for the free incant, I guess. And I could do an unleash. Uh... I prefer an ungraft. We'll just do this. We have nothing left of the steels. Let's see if we're getting a, uh, a thing. Uh, banners or flame? Let's do flame. That's really good. Skip the rest. And we're good on stealth boss. Um, I could minus two an Ice Tornado. They've been pretty useful to me. I might as well make that one Pierce as well. We're already above the shard count, but I'm not necessarily super worried about that. I think we can get rid of all the units at this point, though probably should get rid of these spells too. Um, let's get rid of a few. This spell isn't particularly useful to me, um, and neither is this. That's fine. Let's hold the rest of this gold. Alright. Spell shield? I don't think we're doing that. Seems like a death wish. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine against uh, Sweeper Boss. Bad turn to draw Adaptive, but what you gonna do?
don't think we need urchin spines for this fight. Stand corrected. Um, three by eight should kill. Definitely glad we didn't take the uh, trial. We would have been quite fucked. Uh, we're gonna wait to play this until we're on the floor with everybody. Wait until I like absolutely have to, basically. I can take that up with two of them. I guess the spear is useful there. We'll hit the ice tornado here. Good. And let's get as many of these as we can before doing that. I suppose it didn't matter which one I actually put adaptive on, huh? Should just default to there in that case. Uh, this is not good for my speed run. I gotta remember I'm doing a speed run here. For speed run, preserve doesn't make sense actually. It's a very slow card that requires many clicks. We are in dire need of cost reductions. Cleansing water would be good, because I'm not really hitting many piercings and stuff. Now the remove consume here, I think we take. It could be on urchin spines as well, but it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, surge stone there ain't bad. Perma? Not feeling the perma. Definitely feeling a cost reduction here, and another surge stone there. And removal. At this time, we will get rid of the stewards. Alright, we got spell shield fell, which actually might be annoying. It's only the alabaster guardians, though. Be too bad. We'll just flip the front one back and forth, I think. Because that's the one that'll be getting damage done to it. The dead weight be permafrosted. Does more damage. Preserve anymore. And at this point, we can largely hit in turn. Not doing very good on my speed run here. Uh, Siren Song will take for patient, I guess. Forgot to take a pip. Uh, it's fine, I guess. Um, cavern. I 
Might have to get rid of preserve. I don't know. Let's get rid of preserve. Two sirens should be fine. Uh, that thing I think we want to have keep coming back. Hold over. I could have primer frosted the siren song probably. Um, and hold over and graft, I guess. Oh, I have no money left. Just take that. Fuck it. And I did get a conduit. I don't think we're gonna be able to keep him alive though, or her alive. Should be able to do this. Come on. You fucking piece of shit. It's all three into that. Okay, buddy. <laughs> what are you doing? fucking painful. Jesus. Alright. I uh, can't do that again. More damage on the front, apparently. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Can't overestimate anything about this deck really at this point. Okay. Not that confident into uh, patient to be honest. Um, spike any good? I doubt it. Yeah, we don't really have some answers here. Could have took the engraft, I guess, but at this point, I just don't think so. I was hoping for intrinsic there. Hmm. Lightstone casing, maybe? And what else? Hold over. I could hold over a siren song, I guess. I don't know. At this point, I guess it's the only thing that really makes sense to do. Hmm. Um. We don't. I don't know. I think this isn't as high roll as I thought it would be. I mean, like, we haven't been offered any of the good Stygian spells to do damage other than. There was one crit builder, but Ice Tornado has been my best um, spell for damage, which is, I wouldn't say that blessed necessarily. We'll have to see what God as a Wife ended up doing, because I'd say by my standards, it's not necessarily that blessed. Alright, 240. Don't think we can reroll realistically here, so let's just remove something. I don't really know what that something is. Maybe it's a... This root seed, maybe? And... I 
I don't even know if I want... I'm already at a bad shard count here. Adaptive, I guess, is my answer to patient. Um, kind of feel like this has to be duped. And... I don't really need this... I don't need these steel enhancers, right? I don't need those. This is gonna have to do. Anything else I can do? I guess I will surge down this. So I can have one good backline hit. But yeah, there was like only one piercing and stuff. Could have maybe done a play to put Tethys on another floor. Um, wouldn't be out of the question. Okay. Let's go here. We'll do that. That way we have some days there. We're just going to have to make sure that he's dazed a ton. Let's hold that for when we need it. So we have the holdover on the Siren's uh, songs. We'll just keep using that. We'll just play that as it comes around. So here, we can keep doing this. Hit him with one of them. This is a fine one to burn our melee weakness on. We're going to play this here. Hopefully, I can get kills here. Um, so 166, 40 times 3 is 120, unfortunately, so I don't know if I can daze here. I think we're going to be fine. Um, I guess I don't keep that then. And again, we can just break the melee weakness here, and that's probably fine. We'll have enough health on our frontliner to hopefully be fine here. We've got patient down, you know, quite a bit. Uh, don't think I want that on holdover. Yeah, I'd rather just keep drawing. Um, what should we call it as much as possible? Adapt mutation. Up to 300 health now. I think we'll be fine. Alright. I think I'm cutting it close to beat 27 minutes. That'll help a lot, actually. Alright. Let's hit it. Have to go top. Um, fortunately for Tethys here, that I'm, I'm just gonna do this so I get another thing of defense here. I gotta, I gotta incant. What is it? Um, you know, however many times a turn. So we got this though. That'll be good. Um, as much as I want to do that, well, I got a shard of divinity. I think we're fine. Let's do that. I can flip flop the uh, adaptives around. Let us take that out. That's not going to work, is it? All right, whatever. I remember, we don't have conduit now.
But this is why we cost reducted everything, right? I think we can afford to do that one more time. But we're, lo we're losing armor. We probably don't want to do it too much more. Like here, probably not. I thought I had a cleansing water, by the way. Apparently, it has literally done nothing so far. But, uh, it's just how it likes to go. Hmm. I think I... Probably... I'm trying to think. I may be better off doing this. Yeah, but definitely no more leaks, which might be a little iffy here. We're pretty unscaled. Uh, Alright, we need this to hit well. It's not going swimmingly. I mean, yeah, we're barely making it here. Alright, we're gonna... Keep this on holdover, I guess. Definitely not beating. I, I'm just trying to win the run at this point. Um, yeah, can't do this, but I also have to hit there. This is not. Yeah, they just. You know, trying to. Uh, can I get enough damage here, I wonder? 220. I think that'll get there. I think we're dead on this one, though. I mean, I messed up uh, trying to <laughs> look at that. There's two hits into the uh, dude. I think we're still alive, technically, but man, that is definitely fucked. Yeah, not taking the pip upgrade, though, I think really hurt us. I did not need a draw upgrade, and I could have had two of these on a floor. That would be certainly a lot more powerful than what I'm currently rolling with. Now, if they're all dying, might as well do this. Alright, that ended up being uh, tough for a speed run. Oh, it's a speed run. Let's just let it happen. <laughs> so, did I beat 27 minutes? I think I'm right at 27 minutes. 26, maybe. I think I'll do like a yin and yang episode, because there are some curse seeds still in... Uh, Dusk's queue to go through, so we'll probably start the episode off with this and then go into one of those cursed seeds. So, 2730. Let's go down to the timer here. Score wise, he got me. Uh, and he had 8 seconds. So, God as a wife has me on this one in both regards time and uh, time and whatever you call it. Well, okay, that certainly would have helped. I did not have a founding seal. That's the funny thing about some of these seeds, right? It's like you go one way or the other, and it is significantly different. Of course, he didn't have... Um, he didn't have uh, multi-strike. So I can already think back to when that happened. It was ring three. I had figured going for a multi-strike would have been more beneficial to me than going to the right... You know, 50 50 at multiverse artifacts. Turns out that artifact was better, but he also, as a result, didn't have multi strike. So, you know, they both have their pros and cons, right? He definitely gets more defense, but offensive wise, we're about the same. With quick, though, that certainly would have been nice. He must have just not used uh, Siren. Plus, he also did the pip upgrade at the end, which I should have done. Um. But yeah, definitely not a hard run, right? Like, uh, But I would say in the terms of blessedness, it 
could have had some more stuff. I mean... Like, I would have liked to see Ice Empire. I would have liked to see... Um, Ancient Synergy. Earlier Conduit that I could build around. Stuff like that. I will say, though, yeah, it is a pretty straightforward seed. Either way, the nice thing about that is, you know, the way I went versus the way he went still ends up the same game plan, more or less, right? Um, but yeah. D5. We lost quite a lot of points on the Penitent versus him. It's interesting that the last Divinity... I would have thought... So he took 55 versus me taking 21. Uh, but actually, 25 is the threshold. So even though there was a big damage taken difference, it didn't end up being that many points. I only got 900 on him versus, like, on Penitent, he got, like, uh, 800, it looks like, on me. Otherwise, we're similar. I lost a lot of points on a Hidden Assault because I didn't take the thing, but he also didn't take it there, but I lost, um, I guess just more points since it was an earlier ring versus taking the trial there. But that can kind of show you the difference uh, in our decks, that he's able to take a spell shield um, because he's less reliant on his spells actually doing damage. You know, if you look at it, he hardly has anything that actually does damage. Like, it's a consume ice tornado, probably just there to be there, consume flash freeze. Everything else is just pure scaling, right? Scale them out of control and let them go to town. Three big hits, it's generally all you need. Though there are still some leaks. I'll be honest, it's uh, surprising to me that it didn't leak a bit more. Because, yeah, you got the three big hits, but... Uh, you know, the mini-bosses will be fine for him, but I, I had to imagine some of those... Uh, the wide waves with five... Uh, dudes on a floor had to have been hard because once he blows the ice tornado, once he blows the flash freeze, all he really has is sting to get like an extra hit and there, so you only have the three big hits. So... He must have just really used them right at the right time. And maybe his cleansing water actually debuffed them unlike it like I wasn't de it wasn't debuffing any of the people I needed it to debuff um an ice tornado was definitely underperforming in the uh divinity fight as it always does uh, this is why I do not like this card um it always does this I haven't had a divinity fight where I thought wow ice tornado did well and I've lost a lot of runs because Ice Tornado couldn't hit anything. It just loves to hit nothing of value. And it even had Piercing here and it still just... Yeah, but... It, it's uh, it's a dire... Si it, it's actually almost like... I would have been more scared if I was taking time to think about this run. If I started to realize, you know... I was actually in kind of a dire situation with Ice Tornado as my main spell to do damage. <laughs> so we, you know, we barely eked it out. We were very close to dying. I will say though, that was a fun one. A fun challenge to like, do a speed run at Covenant 25. I don't think I'd be cut out to do much faster than that. I have to think a little bit more. Maybe on a, I, th I think Hellhorn's probably the most in my re wheelhouse to do a really fast speed run. I would have to get an early fledgling imp and a rail beater and like quick and a horn warrior infusion, and I could probably go to town and get like a 22 minute or something. Because then I pretty much know the exact way to victory there, and there's not as many clicks needed. 
not as many decisions needed. But yeah, that was fun. Thanks for that seed you got as a wife. And I'll probably do another episode as a two-part here, just so we have a, a longer video. Stay tuned. All right, we're going to go with... Um, at least at the time of this recording, the most recent Dusk Cursed Seed submission. Giant Warrior's Fathers. Alright, I checked out a few of the uh, front page ones as well as candidates, but they didn't really look like good ones. Okay, um, Superfood is my first thought. The clans go together well is my second thought. My third and final thought is that if I don't go super food aggressive, it's just only so-so. And... yeah. It's a fresh submission, so maybe we'll have... Alright, we got Opal here. Say, usually we'll see Opal, or Eable, or maybe Mean. Those are the likely candidates to run them together. So we got uh, Prismal Dust, Hidden Passage, Prism Retrieval. Prism Retrieval, pretty good if we end up needing a uh, specific imp. Though I will say then we have to prioritize removals of, uh, you know, Queen's Implings, but not that big of a deal. And Hidden Passage, there aren't a whole lot of overstacking things here. However, it does open up Drop Cage. Prismal Dust and a Patient is already kind of countering him. The rest doesn't look too bad to me. I'll have to remember to try to not do a 200 shard run here, because that's like the mode I'm in. Uh, okay, as I said, without Superfood, it's less fun. I probably should... So, so the ceiling with Salwar is higher, right? I can flex into Superfood, and then boom. Realistically, I probably should just do aggressive. Um, yeah. Now we're really looking for Horn Warrior Rail Beater combo with quick and extra mul and just like Ember Drain or One Harm Tome type stuff. I believe a Vapor Funnel is fine. This is one thing I don't like about aggressive. It is so weak, Ring One, that I may not be able to take a Horde here. I mean, we don't have a lot of power in this deck right now. Worst case scenario, there's pretty good artifacts though. Like, even the Umbra artifacts would be good here. Um, Hellhorned Umbra. Hidden Passage could allow me to get around some of the really bad things that could happen. I think I can risk it here. Ooh. Alright, y'all know what I'm doing. This combo, Ring 1, Volatile Gauge, automatic. Have to do it. There's too much that could go well here. So for just gold, I'm not going to risk that. Okay, we draw a bunch of extra cards just to not get um, steward anyway. So the question becomes, should I just feed an impling that has Prismal Dust applied? I don't love that prospect. At least this thing got sharded up. But I can't plink out my way of Ember Drain, which with Volatile Gauge is relevant, right? I think we're just going to try to wait for the boss to get those Prismal Dusts working for us. Alright, these are unfortunate RNG things here. By the way, whoever said that the Volatile Gauge skews away from threes is wrong. There's no way that's possible. I see these type of turns way too often. 
There's no way my luck is that bad. Hmm. Yeah, we've gotten about as bad of RNG as we could have got. I mean, if this thing is here anyway, I could just I could just move it up. Kind of want to plink this though. All right, they didn't hit what we wanted to hit. Do I care about extra energy next turn? Um, do I care about just two extra health? I suppose I gain one health here anyway. Funnel not really saving us anything yet. Okay. I'm gonna try to draw back into these. Maybe even next turn would be nice. I wanna plink here, but I think I'd rather get these out. Okay, Vapor Funnel did something. I think we just full on that and we should be good. Alright. Not bad. Opal's still in the tournament scoring thing. I've mentioned it in other videos, but in case anyone's wondering, I, I turned it off because I started doing daily challenges again. I didn't want to like have people questionably report my scores. They would go in, event, you know, at the end as a normal score, but I didn't want to get disqualified from doing daily challenges or anything like that. Mind Collapse is quite good with a gauge. That's probably the one I'm going to choose, but I'm just debating if Mortal Trade makes any sense. It usually doesn't with a uh, Volatile Gauge. Yeah, if you, I think Mind Cap Collapse is a very good card to get here. Uh, Welder Helper is takeable. Should get a unit. Endless is our right to hit as well. There's Endless. Uh, I could skip this if it sucks. I don't have a super good Endless target. Like, Endless will help her with Gage. Eh. It's alright, I guess. Could also skip this if it completely sucks. <laughs> it does completely suck. Look at that. Oh, wait. I have Gage. It doesn't suck. I could see just taking this for the 10x or hell. All right, Opal. Hopefully, you went gauge. I think I'm about to. Uh, I might be pulling ahead here. <laughs> no. Um, I can't actually fit. Like, if I want to feed this guy with Primordium, I can't actually fit Welder Helper on. Ooh, drop cage. Oh, he has Firebox. Okay, this is not cursed. This is a blessed seed in my life. Okay, I just gotta... I gotta... Um, message Opal really quick. I'm saying, please tell me you've visited at least one of these Divine Hordes. <laughs> Because here's the thing, even if you didn't get Gage, you got Improved Firebox could let you take these units. You'd have to visit it before the unit though, which uh, would be tough. I almost skipped those without even thinking. I'm debating Firebox because that opens up, cons I don't know, Patient, Drop Cage, we probably just do Drop Cage. It does open up like the... Um, Conqueror's Horn or whatever it's called pretty well, but uh, yeah, I think Drop Cage. Now I have... I wonder if a damage shield here is fine. We're looking for quick multi. I go here, I mean quick and multi are big hits. I don't know if I need to lock anything in right now. 40 health is fine. Spikes.
does hurt a little bit. I think we can take this, so I do need this gold for this to, to try to get quick and multi if I could. Still comes in with the max damn thing. <laughs> I mean, look at this. 3-3-2-2, three, three, two, two, not a single one. I, I just don't believe that, uh, that these actually have the... Um, man, plus damage here would have been so nice. Oh. We could take a shitload of damage here. I could just move this up is probably fine. That way... I just take that hit. Should I keep that? That might be an okay card to just let cycle back. Damn. Somehow 30 shards it's got exactly both the foot soldiers fucked up here. Uh, I don't want that to die if I can help it. This I don't need though. I'm gonna do this. Just try to yeah. I kind of want that here. Yeah. Of course this comes at a three as well. So we're only taking six here because of Vapor Funnel. Um... I could block basically all this damage. I should just do that. Right, at least this came in at zero. Which is funny, because I didn't think that that portion of it would get respected, but it looks like it did. Let's take a flyer and a plink here. Okay, that's great. We should have victory here. Sucks we had to take six damage, but it is what it is. Um, I wouldn't mind this, even though it's volatile gauged. It'll allow me to actually use this welder helper, which might be nice. But is that that important to, to add this to the deck? I could just add another prismal dust. I think I like the other Prismal Dust. Uh, AoE might be necessary if I don't end up finding a... Yeah, I, I guess I don't mind taking the flyer on this. We're not getting Vent. I mean, Inferno is still a big hit. Uh, we don't, we're not going to have flat AoE, though, if we don't hit Inferno. I can at least put this into something. What are we fighting? That to tell us. I don't think any of these... well... I'm so close on the gold that I think I need the gold here. I'm being pretty greedy here. I'm just... even if I get endless large stone, I think I'm fine here. I at least get the endless. Okay, we got quick. That's huge. And then I think we just re-roll here. Yeah, let's check this really quick. Ten and pierce is really good on the uh, mine collapse. Boom, we got everything we needed. So, I wouldn't times five anything here. And if I get the hammer, I would like to put piercing on it. Shroud Spike's not out of the... well, yeah, I didn't take... Like, Gem Trove and, uh... And whatchamacallit. Grovel are still in... Can't future candidates. But if it's just Plinks... Certainly Shroud Spike is a miss. Rail Spike isn't that amazing, I think, with, uh... Volatile Gauge. It's not as good as you'd think. It is good, don't get me wrong, but... You know, we have a lot of X costs. It's just reducing the cost on like hidden passages right now, and I guess like imps and units. Assuming I even play it like a relevant amount of energy. 
I feel like the upside of Shroud Spike wins out here. But even then, like right now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We, we need a defensive thing. Would it be weird to just take the spike of the Hellhorn? I mean, Kindle could happen. Just a little bit of defense and offense for a boy here. It has upside. I would also argue this is not that great necessarily with uh, Volatile Gauge. Because it costs a lot more on average to generate a morsel. And if this is going to be my only unit, which I don't know if it will. Uh, if it's going to be my only unit, then... Uh, I don't have space on the floor. And I'm most likely taking Ember upgrades. I think I could see this being the call. There is upside here. Like I said, with Kindle, with the X-Cost Artifact, last Hell Pack. Those are all acceptable. Now we're going in here with 40 shards. I don't have an amazing spell chain, so I won't take one. Okay, the one cost... Um, Plink doesn't... I don't, yeah. This is just a little weird all around. Um, hmm. I could go bottom. I, I, I think it's fine just to do this. Okay, I'm hitting twice. Right, I could save myself 10 damage by doing this. I think that's about the best. I think, I think that's a fine use of that card. I have two more, so... Um, let's see. Let's try for a plink here. Let's take that out. And let's feed him twice. I'm going to save that. do this. Would have been a good turn to just plow a bunch of these in, but I, I'm wasting... Uh, I think it's worth trying for these plinks. Let's put it that way. Oh, you're actually killing that, huh? Let's do this. Okay, that was actually what I wanted to happen. So now I can still get my energy for next turn. That's happening. Uh, I can also try for a plink. Here's the best candidate. Do I want Ember or Damage Shield? Damage Shield, I think. This guy's dying, but I also don't really care to redraw into that River Morsel. If it's going to cost between 1 and 3. Alright, we take everything out here. Let's go here. And here. Now you got four dazed. Nearly killed it. Um, this is a fine turn for that, I think. And that should be game, for now at least. Furnace Tap is not out of the question. We'd really have to lean into cost-reducing spells. Um, and maybe Hellventing Mind Collapse a bunch of times, but that is not out of the question. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it could work. Then again, Blazing Bolts is also really good with Gage. 
if our main problem here, or if our main concern is that we only have two hits, both these help with that in their own ways. Blazing Bolts, they both have their own problems with inconsistency. I don't see any Scourge stuff ahead of us for sure, so... I could prioritize all Merchant of Magics from here on out, which makes sense. I mean, they're all very hittable. I do have to give up a Helven at the end, but... We've already passed two up, though, so there's only two left. At max. I also have to go through a ring without cost reductions. I could Helvent the Mind Collapse, though. Man, I don't even necessarily want to hit this Hellvent, because Horde-wise, there's a lot of good stuff. There's Gurg's Goad, there's Chain of Gems, first Hell Pact would be the best thing, uh, the Split Anvil would be amazing, anything that adds energy in any sort of way would be amazing. Railhammer could be good. We haven't got our unit draft yet, like a Steelworker or something. I'm a little worried about this build, though. Um, like setting up against Divinity right now, top is not doable. I think Furnace Tap represents some stuff here. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, Branded Warrior's Takeable. It provides some scaling. The floor-wide scaling is wasted. This is where we start to see if we had just started Stalwart, and if we were to get Superfood right now, we would have a better build, because then the Branded Warrior starts to make a lot more sense. I'm able to stack Furnace Tap better, I'm able to stack Damage Shield better, I'm able to just set up top better, set up against Patient better. Here's the thing though, if we got stuck with Stalwart and no uh, offer of Superfood, um, or just nothing that went into it, the no offer of Superfood is more likely than just not getting stuff for it. Uh, but you know, 25% basically is the chance of not getting offered Superfood if we started Stalwart. I could still flex Superfood if it's offered with Aggressive. It's not out of the question. Like, I might. That would allow me a top floor setup, and I don't really need necessarily to get a whole lot of damage. I just need a kill to start spiraling with the the Rage, and I can put, like, Spike of the Hellhorn on the Primordium. I've got options. I think a Branded Warrior's takeable here. Ember. I'm thinking Hellvent. I'm thinking Hellvent. Uh, I really would like to Hellvent the Mind Collapse, I suppose. I don't know, though. Money would be nice. Uh, health. Maybe not as much. So this is where lists went down. Let's go here. Spell chain, intrinsic, intrinsic. Uh, prismal dust is not out of the question. You know, it's so funny because, like, if I had just gotten a rail beater, even with a gauge and I had these upgrades, I would have rather had the Railbeater than the Consumer of Crowns. That just goes to show, like, with the Railbeater, it's two pip. I could put the Branded Warrior into the Railbeater, put two on a floor, they self-scale. And I could just do, like, Endless Welder Helper self-infused or something. Wouldn't even need that with this combo, because I got, like, damage shield. Uh, I don't know that I take him. I think I have a path to just using a singular unit here. Should have checked the uh, champ upgrades first, but yeah, whatever. So what was it? Intrinsic spell chain? I think I would flex superfood at this point. Yeah, we don't get it. And now it just doesn't make sense to flex superfood, so we probably have to... 
Man, I wish the caverns were with us. We'll look for a mine jacks, I guess. Hopefully we can get a mine jacks, because I don't want to take a pip upgrade. Or if, if I can otherwise get ember help with artifacts, but right now we just don't have any of that. Um, yeah, I'm going to help with this. I think this furnace tap has to get played. Um, I don't think we spell chain anything. Uh, I could do this now. Might as well. It's arguably not that good, but uh, we need some other form of scaling because we're just not really hitting it. Um, I could intrinsic this and I could still set up top and not need a pip upgrade. I need to intrinsic it and get like a minus two or something on it though. I do think it's worth an intrinsic, though. I won't do anything else. 80 shards is already going to be enough. I don't think anything's getting by. Alright, you can go down. Do this, and... This is as good of a turn as any to do that. We'll lose some to spikes, most likely. This is actually a pretty good turn, because we haven't seen the other stuff yet. Too bad I can't kill that, huh? Well, anyway, here's Wonderwall. Uh, pity. Yeah, whatever. Could have also just done... Uh, this, but it's fine. I can kill with that. Now I don't lose the, the whatever. This is actually really good that that didn't get sharded up. I'm gonna wait on the prismal dot. Actually, we, we could do one of these now. There's no downside to that. So we're gonna be fine for a while, I think. Um, let's get you here. Again, we just luck out. We're getting pretty good luck here. Just burn that to burn it. We don't really need it. And the stick. There's a lot of artifacts to stick with. Like we, we would definitely like to hit some artifacts. So this doesn't kill anything here. I can wait on a better turn for that. It was the which boss was it? It was the party boy. Finally out of Ember Drain, just for me to go go and Ember Drain myself again. I suppose it's fine. Just go ahead and do that. Bring him up. All right. Honestly, I it's all right. The plinks become a bit, but a little more relevant, and the mine collapse in particular benefits from this a little bit. Better than twenty five gold, I suppose. Amber cash is not good. Um, Crucible extension is takeable. Is it that necessary though? That I don't know. What am I getting? Just the Welder Helper at the moment? One sec, I gotta be right back.
All right. I don't know that I gain much from Crucible Extension. I would have needed this earlier, then I could build around it, but considering this guy is three entire pip, it's like I would actually like to get two onto a floor. I mean, I could hellvent this guy and take this, and then that becomes like an okay play. You know, I can keep Divinity dazed quite a lot or with the uh, Hidden Passage. I, th I think I will take Crucible Extension. Mm. The Inferno here is a double-edged sword. Um, it denies me slays, but it also is probably something I want. Let's take it. I probably just won't play it much up until the Divinity fight. So I think we still want to go left. Hold over. Hmm. Wish we had a temple here. Lightstone casing, probably. I mean, I'm probably not able to honestly make a whole lot of use of it, but it's worth taking. Um, I might take this gold. So my thought is, with if I do eventually hellvent the uh, consumer... All I need is one Crucible Extension, and then I need... After it's eaten, I can put the second one in. And then we'll do... Uh, we'll put the other one down. I think if I hold something over, considering it's patient, I think it should be a Hidden Passage. I can minus one it. I'd love to minus two it, but... I don't think I need to be too greedy here. The other option is Inferno or a Mind Collapse. Without a plus 10 here, I'm less inclined to do Mind Collapse, so it would honestly be okay. Also, the Inferno has anti-synergy with the Mind Collapse, of course, but I still think it's worth adding. I'm going to hold over the Hidden Passage for now. I'm going to minus 1 it. Uh, Surge Stone of Plink is fine. I don't think Permafrost is very good here. With, uh... Volatile Gauge. Now we just want to, like, cost-reduce things that we generally want to be playing. Um... I think that would be an okay one for now. Inferno next. But we're not playing Inferno right now. So I'm not as, like, gung-ho on doing it. I I'm gonna take this gold. Um, I would like to get rid of some stuff. I just have a bit too much stuff right now. Do I beat Stealth Boss? I have to imagine I do without even really needing stewards. Do I need gold coming up? No. Get rid of a plank as well, I guess. Alright, I'm good with that. It's this guy. That is the last guy we want to be seeing here. Well, I can get an okay amount of damage. Too bad we didn't get a double stack for the Furnace Tap. Or even a Consumer Move. It's actually the two worst upgrades we could have hoped to find there. I think this is too easy to not take, but... I'm not entirely sure what the plan is for beating uh, for beating uh, this boss. We'll definitely want to keep on to that. We're going to want that armor. I need to hit these with huge, huge hits. I take a 6 damage here. I don't know why I didn't just Inferno this first. Um, yeah, I'll kill that normally. I guess we just Inferno this. I am definitely worried about our ability to kill the boss. If I can hit the 
like a double hidden passage when he's on the bottom, that might be the way to do it. Uh, I think a three here is pretty good. We want to let these slaves come through. At the same time, I also want to get rid of stuff. Um, let's go like this. Again, I don't. I, I do want to get like both these slaves. I don't need this. So let's just do that. We definitely want to play that. That's happening no matter what. Um, I want both slaves. Now, since I want all the slaves, I could kill that one. Ah, shit. Fucking no. Let's try to. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to lose a damage shield here for that. That's the main thing. Came in at the max cost. Doesn't matter. I have no amber. Okay, I can kill this thing now. Too late to get that one. Although I could just do this. That works too, huh? Yeah, I'll take that. Then we'll take that one out. Three is probably the best I can hope for here. Is it? Might be. Still Ember Dreamed. Well, we can hit a Hidden Passage. Um, let's do the math here. I, yeah, I should kill this, right? I do 600 damage. Two days is enough with the 8 damage shield. Alright, we get it. Okay. No on them. I have to imagine we're taking this tiresome climb. Pirate Chumper's not out of the question either. But, uh, yeah, tiresome climb. That is really good. So, room left here for sure. Spell chain pierce. That is a huge upgrade. Alright, now I'm, I'm hell venting this right now then. That is such a good upgrade. Yeah. That just made this deck a million times better. Uh, get rid of Steward Plink again. Anything worth adding a piercing on? Not really. I could spell chain the Furnace Tap. I think that's worth it. Gotta resist going full on for the uh, 200 shard run here. It's still like a little wonky, right? This is a fun run though. This is, how often do you see a run like this? Again, everything is skewed towards three it seems. So we'll just have to draw back to that. Um, we can do this. I'm trying to, uh, so we would be ember drained for the rest of the fight if I do this, but at the same time, if I do this, I just don't really need much else. Do I just want every slay here? I think so. So I'm not going to kill anything. We have four strikes. I could burn that. Did 
does have five stealth. That'll be fine. Um, do I want to play any of these things? I'd rather just do it on a turn that I have Prismal Dust. That's the only thing I really need to do is get damage shield. Uh, also, this would be acceptable. But there's no mind collapse this turn. Suppose this is fine. Maybe we can stack days somehow in this guy. If I keep rolling the bottom of my ember there. This. So like this, for example, I think is... I think it's worth, there's, there's an incant shard, which sucks obviously, but I think uh, we don't mind too much. I'd rather get two damage shield here than trying to just stack days. I, I don't think realistically I can stack days in this guy. I also just don't think I need to. I mean, I'm doing quite a lot of damage. Damn, why? he came in at three every single time. It's kind of ridiculous. I could have played him if he just stopped coming in at 3. Uh, we're finally out of the Ember Drain. It looks like I'm going to be doing this. I could do this. Just to, uh, well. Now, nah, either way. Does this even get me an extra hit? 34? I don't think that it does. Let's just do, uh. Yeah. And again, like this just has to come in at the max, I guess. Why why do I still have this? Didn't I play that out? I could have sworn I played that out. I'm so confused. I guess I didn't. Well, either way. Six, we should definitely be good here. And if not, we have that. Tiny consumers. Okay, I mean a one-armed tome works, but maybe just a trample stone. I, you know, trample stone might not actually be as good as one-armed tome for me. As long as I have damage shield, maybe the fine. Uh, so I'll probably skip the last helven. I really could use like. Hopefully it just doesn't roll me hold over and shit frost again. If I can just get a consumer move or a double stack on this thing, we'd be going. Either way, I'm going to take it. Um, well, the consumer move I would put on a prismal dust. Like, I need to actually apply a lot of damage shield if I'm going to go the fragile route. So we don't need pip. We can keep going ember here. Now, I don't know what I should do here. I definitely don't need the steel for anything, but Vortex would be nice. Cavern could be nice. Get some health and some gold, and then chance at like some pretty good trinkets. I think I want the chance at these trinkets. There's just too many good trinkets left in the pool for me. Well, I don't need jacks anymore. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if I would do mine jacks. I do have to blow that first Prismal Dust against Divinity on Primordium. It's the only weak thing here. I don't think it's that bad. I could still find something that helps me. God, these are not it, though. Well, hard to s expect that you <laughs> low roll this hard. I mean, that was just abysmal. Yikes. That was pretty fucking bad. Oh, well. I know we're given what's his name trample here, but uh, I'm fine with it. I think this is a fine upgrade for that, but we won't do anything else. I think we won't have too much problem getting to, like, we'll take that for sure. So I'm going to 150 here, even without the hell vent. Huh, super food. I like this here. I give up. Like, I do give up technically double flat damage by doing this, but what I gain 
are shitloads of damage shield. It's much more justifiable to me to put the damage shield onto you know who. Um, and I can stack multi strike even better. Yeah, let's flex the superfood. I'm liking this. Uh, should I make any removals? It's an expensive removal. I think I like it though. This deck is a little bit fat. This should be fine. Hey look, they finally didn't come in at 3. They came in at 2 instead. Well that's fine. I think we are good to finally get the two of these in for once. And I believe this is fine. See now we're stacking rage to the whole floor. I'm getting damage shield stacked. Would I do that? There is spikes. And I'll lose all my damage shield here, however, it'll transfer two to me. I'll be at four. Even if there's spikes. I believe this is worth it. Um, it's probably unnecessary. That's a thing. So I lose two damage shield. And then I need 10 health. I don't know, it would be nice just to fucking get this up, to be honest. So 154 by 2. That would kill that. And this guy cleans up both of them. Like, this is definitely better than Furnace Tap this fight, but if I don't deal with these, that's kind of annoying. I guess what I could do is just take this hit. I think I like this. So we're going to do that, and we're going to do this. I probably just don't want to do Furnace Tap this fight, and I can get my... Alright, now we're, we're looking good now. Um, we'll have four strikes. I could also just get more multi-strike here, huh? Is it more important for me to stack damage shield though? This guy doesn't have spikes, which is good. So, I know I want to do this. Do I want to do this as well? I believe that I do. That is actually pretty good here. Oh, can't play it. Oh, whatever. It could come in at a zero, I think, technically speaking. That's a really good hit there. Um, I would do this just to actually get an extra... an extra stack here. It's pretty important that I have as many as possible there. But yeah, we're sitting pretty well. We got Fine and Endy. Fine and Endy's been doing uh, 200 shard runs as part of the crew. Seven damage shield, we should be fine. No sense taking damage here. Can do that. Yeah, this guy's not gonna know. I'm not gonna know what hit him. Four days just on top of all of that. GG. <laughs> this is looking pretty nice. Engine upgrade isn't that out of the question. Uh, it's going to be tough to play. I don't know. Considering it's going to be average cost of two, it's going to be tough for me to find a, a turn to play it. 
unless I get split anvil. But if I get split anvil, I'm probably fine anyway. What it does though is it really counteracts this ember drain quite well. Huh. I think I'm going to skip it. I'd take another one of these. All I have to do is hit, you know, it somewhat early. Am I still liking Merchant of Magic more than a Hellvent? I think so. Cost reductions here and there on some of these, uh, these cards would be quite nice. And I want removals, I think. Some extra gold would be nice. Cheater's Hand, Wing Technology, Boon. Cheater's Hand is enticing. Ugh, hold over. I don't actually want that. Oh, Gurg's Goad, Gurg's Goad, yes. Okay, we, we're definitely good here. So, we should focus just on the defense at this point. Um, so, like, I think get these down in cost... Cheater's hand, I think I will take. Hold over. I guess I would hold this over. That's pretty good with the Ember Drain now. Put a 10 there. Turns out we didn't need Inferno at all. I've literally not played it. Ah, give me hold over and shit frost twice. That sucks. We could have gotten even more insane if we had found a double stack and a consumer move. Because then I get to really show you all the power of... Uh, of, you know, Volatile Gauge, but it's fine. Um, what did I put on Holdover? Something that I can't touch, I think. Um, I don't think... It'd be, it'd be fun to put on Inferno's Tap, but again, I think... Like, just this would probably be better. Oh yeah, I put on Mind Collapse. Yeah, I think this is fine. Ten... We just don't need spend that money. So I think I'll take a Cheaters. And the artifacts that we got. And I won't complain about that, but some of these other ones just kind of suck, huh? Well, whatever. Uh, Traders Quill... I think we're just going to make some removals. Let's see what we get first from this. Get rid of these stewards. Um, and... Links are gone. Get one more removal. I really don't end up needing this Crucible extension, do I? I'm trying to think what it gets me. Nothing. We never ended up. And here's the thing: we, you know, you could say we hire old volatile gauge. Honestly, it's funny that we're using these, but in all honesty. Your average Hellhorn Umbra run will be better with Volatile Gauge than this. I'm not kidding you. Like, we didn't hit some of the real heavy hitters, in my opinion, that you can find with Gauge. Like, and I'm not talking units. Like, yeah, you can find like Consumer of Crowns or Shadow Siege, but like, I'm thinking more like like we could get like uh, maybe I'm talking out of my ass, but I feel like you, you can get like stuff like Gem Trove. Like, I don't know. I guess it's it's all right. Um, you know, we, we've hit. I, I'd say this is... It's not... It's definitely unique for a Volatile Gauge run, but I don't think it's, like, super out of the crazy realm high roll. Like, just simply getting my ability to double stack stuff for essentially no cost. You no, know, I could have... There's definitely other stuff I could have rolled into here, like Split Anvil, Caverns that would have helped. But, you know, we got a good Cavern. We got the, the Micro Stone and a unit that's obviously cheated out. Yeah. All right. Patient. Good. If he started top, we would have a decision to make, but because he didn't, we don't really. Okay. We're going to put you down first. We're going to go like this. Um, I'm going to go like that. 
We're going to be Ember Drain for the rest of this fight, but I don't think that's that horrible of a thing. Because I just want shitloads of uh, multi-strike, and then we're going to do that. Dude, this is something weird with uh, Cheater's Hand, I've noticed. Like, this came in at a zero. I can't tell you why. <laughs> I can't tell you why. Um, so we could get more damage shield here versus more rage. I think I like that because we can do... Here, yeah, let's do this. That, and I'll bring you back up. I gotta be going for that juicy flying kill. Ooh, I could play that this turn. Alright, we'll bring that back because I want to play. This. Uh, we can do that. Are we able to? We got the whole crew here, man. Yeah, the whole crew here. Alright, let us go for... How do we get the most damage possible here? We want you to definitely be dazed. Two by ten. Right, we should get the flying kill, it's just not gonna be a super early one. But definitely the next time patient sees us, he'll uh he'll be dead. Wait, that shouldn't be possible. Yeah, see something weird goes on with fucking uh This is proof positive of it. Cheater's hand does something wonky with uh with Volatile Gauge, because there's no way this should be able to cost 3 here, and there's no way that the unit should have costed 0, so something weird happens with Cheater's Hand, because this should have been guaranteed for me to be able to play. Oh well. Let's move you up, I guess. You'll die the other turn. Alright, got him. Alright. Oh, this is a, a beautiful turn one. I'm fine actually infernoing this group. I think. Let me think about this. I think so. I give up one out of, you know, four versus five damage shield to make this play. I think I like it. These are just annoying to try to chunk through, especially if I don't end up stacking multi-strike, which is entirely possible if I don't draw well here. Yeah, we drew dead this time, unfortunately. Both are in the bottom deck, both of the uh, multi-strike cards, so we don't end up stacking any of it. Suppose that's fine, though. We can put shitloads of Dazed on Divinity. I can at least play this. Probably do that. So let's go... One... Two... Buckle my shoe... Do that, that. Do I want damage shield more? Or do we. Uh, nine days, I mean, this is. Yeah, let's just get some more damage shield. Make sure he doesn't die. Alright, we 
get our cards here. Let's have this coming at a better cost. Okay, this is our holdover card. See, now it comes in at zero. Again, this shouldn't be possible. I have done no upgrades to it. Uh, it's wonky. I don't really I really know what's going on. Like, this makes sense. I have a zero, or I have one, you know, it basically rolled a one here and went to zero. But yeah. That is worth it, but we'll say that it is, I guess. Uh, why do I only have eight armor? Let's do this. I don't think I need that on holdover anymore. At 16 damage shield, I'm fine. I guess I could have gone for an earlier flying kill, but this is fine. Yeah. GG. Whatever. Fun run. I liked that one. It's funny because, like, this was a cursed run, but it ended up being more blessed than the blessed run that we just did on the other part of this episode. Uh,. Which is all, you know, I'm sure this run looks a lot worse if you don't take the Divine Hordes. So, I don't know though, I, I do think you can make an, uh, an argument to not take the Divine Horde Ring 1 for sure. I do stand by that it's takeable though when I have a Vapor Funnel already. That mitigates my chance to just completely bust out. And I, you know, I could have took a lot of damage, but I think the risk is worth it. I think there's there's multiple ways you end up able to make this uh, consumer of crowns work. You know, if we didn't, here's the thing: if we didn't take that divine horde ring one, ring two, if I had visited the divine horde before getting the unit, which I never would do, though, is the problem. But a lot of people might. You could you know you can make it work because I don't I don't know that I've ever picked the consumer of crowns on a web. Maybe I look, maybe I get that awful choice though if I don't have gauge. And I look in the see there's a Divine Horde, and I'm like, well, there are quite a few that would make this work. I probably still take a Demon Fiend in that case, because Forever Flame makes it playable, or is it. I, I could also say with all the imps we have, maybe we just go with crowns anyway, right? Um, anyway, though, 64k, not a bad score. Not a bad score. Very curious to see what Opal ended up doing. Um, that was, yeah, very rare to see a run like that. I love these type of runs, so Volatile Gauge is so fun. There's, there's just too much that it hits in Hellhorn Umbra for it to ever be bad, ring one. There's just no way that you can miss on everything. 
I'll tell you, I'll, here's my challenge to y'all. If, if there's a if there's a run where this is offered ring one in Umbra, Hellhorn, any combo of it, and and you think it's bad, please send it my way, and I will see if I'll, I'll eat crow if that's the case. But I guarantee I probably find a pretty good use of it in the run. So see what Opal went with. Yeah, see, she, did, she didn't visit the hordes, therefore it ends up being kind of a cursed seed for her, potentially. Not really, though. No damage taken here. Um, Paper Funnel. So probably just took that Endless at the, the Ring 1. Ended up with Alloy at Ring 2, maybe? Yeah, she went left there. Finds Quick and Multi for it. I mean, that's obviously pretty good into full... Aggressive. So. And she goes with the Shroud Spike. And let's see. Yeah, because she took Making of a Morsel, which makes this a lot more takeable. The Permafrost, I like that. You know, you can start with it. Start with two of them. You're guaranteed um, to have them for when this comes around. Then you just blast them down. Upper stone helps a bit. You know, it's definitely a good run in here. But yeah, I think it's it's a more standard run, and it's definitely good upgrades here for this unit, which make it a lot less bad. I would still say this isn't like a uh, probably a horrible run. This seems actually pretty smooth. It's just not one where we can go as, you know, as stupid as we went. Like this, you know, it doesn't fly and kill divinity. It has to go down to the wire. But otherwise, still pretty smooth, right? She didn't take damage at all, um, other than here and here, which even we took damage on Penitent, right? But yeah, that was a fun one. Anybody else finish yet? Oh, so this is the original submitter. Alright, already I see... So that hammer chest plates, if I recall correctly, that was the first Divine Horde. So I took the first Divine Horde and took a chest plate. So I have uh, massive disagreements with that. You know, it, if you want to take something other than gauge, that's fine. But you got to take something better than, than hammered chest plates. I... I would say, I don't remember what the other option was, but I do remember chest plates being there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Gauge in this combo is just too good. You also don't really give up any any power. Like, like you're not gaining much by doing five health here. Um, I guess really early is when it is most powerful. And yeah, with Primordium, you are getting quite a lot of extra health, but I don't know. I also don't, I, I don't know about taking the uh, the trial here. I guess both of them took it. That that seems pretty risky to me with uh, with Primordium. Now I don't. It, it's funny because like I don't know if the draw order changes because I took Gauge, but. We saw it with my extra draw with Gage, I didn't draw a unit at the start. So I, I can't remember exactly what the draws were, but like you could easily draw dead here. Um, that's fine though. You know, risks, I, I, I'm fine with risks being taken. When you have Plinks and Queen Simplings, you're likely to be able to take that, right? So I, I can't disagree with it too much, but. And I also, I can't disagree also with Opal just skipping the first horde, right? But I do have disagreements if you take that first horde, and I think taking plates over gauge, I just, I don't know. But, so what we see here is he ends up going for the crowns. So, you'd have to get, you'd have to cycle back through your deck. Um, you go Queen's Imp. You have the Endless Helper. You gotta get three of them down to play this. Probably not impossible to do, but man, it's sh 
Yeah, it's tough. It's like, so you didn't take the Divine Horde Ring 2. I think at the point of me taking Consumer of Crowns, you did self-infuse it as well, which means you have one less imp to play. I suppose so, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know about taking the Divine Horde Ring 1. And then taking the Consumer blind and not taking a chance on the Divine Horde Ring 2? I'm not saying it's straight up wrong in either case, but I do think it's just way outside the way I play. I think if I if I take the crowns, I'm I'm taking a chance on some sort of energy related artifact. Even it's even if it's something like a queen's tail, that would go a little bit toward helping me play this. I I draw through the deck faster, and I can get the imps down easier. Even if even if it's a forever con I, and I also, you know, I, I can definitely see this. Um, I think it's tough to know what I would do in that situation because obviously we went in with the gauge, right? God, that was a fun one though. But yeah, I guess you took this trial. That was just gold, right? And you beat ring three. And I, I just don't know about taking Crucible Collector here. You could have had a Rail Beater, right? Didn't we see Rail Beater in the Ring 3 reward? If not, I think with these units, I would have definitely went to the Ring 4 Hellhorn Banner, because I am not settling for this with the setup I have here. Like, this is just not... Like, like it's not happening. Um, however, you could have just got a Rail Beater, and that Rail Beater probably could have got you through this fight more than this could have. You almost made it. You almost made it, but... Spell chain here, I suppose is fine. It's a little anti this, I would say, since you want your queens to stick. Though, I, if you're only playing it with a helper, again, I just don't know. Like, I guess it's. I think you're in a weak spot right now, and I wouldn't be spending shards here unless they really help me out. And I don't think this helps you out much. I don't think it's worth the fifteen shards. Like at ninety three percent damage that might have been the difference between you able to beat it or not you know i saw piercing i saw at that point that would have just been i would have rather put 10 10 into the piercing on mind collapse that could have killed a lot of stuff saved your prior health allowed you to do more with this this furnace tap i like the furnace tap take since he had the collapse but i don't like not putting piercing on it those are all the things I can think of. But yeah, I don't know. It's such a fiesta of a run that's hard to really give concrete advice. I can just tell you, I can tell you what I did worked. And I can tell you that often, I, I haven't had an Umbra Hellhorn run where Gage didn't work out. So again, I, I give that challenge to anybody. If there's a Ring 1 Gage Hellhorn Umbra that is like just horrible, please send that seed my way. I'd love to give it a shot. Anyway, that was a super fun one, though. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.